Happy you could come along. We are joined, as always, by Greg Engert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group. The group includes where we are, Church Key, Birch and Barley downstairs, also GBD in DuPont Circle. Greg, it is always good to see you. Good to see you, too. What is on tap this week? So this week, uh, we have a, a very special treat. It's um, Allagash Cezanne, um, and it's uh, really, really interesting and cool because it is the first new year-round beer that Allagash has released uh. in a long time. You know, Allagash goes back to 1995, so it'll be 20 years old uh, next year, which is crazy. Rob Todd, who's a very close friend of mine, and uh, he actually also went to my alma mater, Middlebury College, so okay. uh, he's a great guy. He started back in 95 trying to fill a void because at that time, you know, craft beer sprung up, mostly dominated by you know, English-inspired beers. Uh, you saw some German stuff here and there, uh, but nobody was really brewing Belgian, and he saw a, a void, and he sought to fill it by brewing one single beer, which I'm sure we all know is Allagash White, um, a, an amazing uh, American version of a Belgian classic uh, wit beer, coriander and orange peel, crisp, refreshing, and literally brewed that by himself around the clock uh, for a very long time. Uh, and then uh, that led to him going into brewing uh, a Belgian style double and then a triple. He'd brew four, which is a quad, um, kind of bigger, uh, more robust, stronger Belgian style ales, which really back in those days were all the rage. People used to drink Trappist ales mm. like crazy. You couldn't find Rochefort on the shelves anywhere. You know what I mean? So um, in, uh, that's kind of, it's mellowed a bit recently, but you know, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, those styles were huge. And then he, you know, Allagash was one of the first people to start doing sours and uh, with interlude and, and barrel aged beers. And then they even had one of the first, if not the first, cool ships in the United States for making spontaneous beer. But all along the way, they'd never brewed a Saison for, uh, you know, a kind of larger commercial release. So it's kind of, you know, it's a funny thing now you're like, Allagash Saison, and people are like, wow, yeah, I can't believe they didn't have that already. Um, so I guess they're filling a void again. So, excellent. Mm. Of course, Allagash, one of those breweries where you, you just expect something good every Everything's time. I mean, their good, reputation yeah. is amazing. Everything's always great. Oh, I like that. Drier nice dry, than yeah. many saisons? No, no, actually, no? just well, okay. I mean, just about right. I think it definitely, but that's a good I point. Like it's on the dry side okay. for sure. Like, um, there are definitely some saisons out there that aren't as dry. This is, you know, kind of an, you know, paying homage to the classic vein of Saison Farmhouse Ale that's become uh, the most overarching, which is that of DuPont Saison, Saison DuPont from Torp in the Hainaut province of Wallonia, which is the southern French speaking south of Belgium. That's, what, that's what's become known as the Saison. So this is very reminiscent of that. Um, but, uh, it's, but at the same time, you know, it, it is just a classic Saison, 6.1% alcohol. Uh, available in 12 ounce bottles and what I really love about this Saison is uh, it really shows where our tastes have gone you know it's not by accident that you know Rob started brewing the wit beer which was a great transitional beer it's a beer that he didn't have to convince too many people to drink you know it could you could go from the macro lager into the wit beer it wasn't as jarring um, you know certainly not as dry as this nice bold fruit uh, wheat driven flavors really really delicious and then from there into the strong stuff the strong Belgians that the people uh, wanted but back in the late 90s and the early 2000s like Cezanne wasn't a thing you know what I mean like people didn't drink Cezanne or seek it out but now everybody makes one and it seems like it has become uh, kind of the, the beer of of the moment and I think a lot of that has to do with what you just mentioned dryness you know uh, people are looking for Balance. They're looking for refreshing beers. I mean, how many people are talking about the the session IPAs and, and session this, session that? Lower ABVs, a refreshing, bubbly, effervescent beer you can drink in the heat of the summer, but is robust and, and flavorful enough to um, keep you going back to the, the glass. It's complex and easy. And what I always like to say with saisons is, if I just feel like drinking a beer that I don't want to think about, I can have a golden hued saison. And if I want to think about a beer and really, really absorb its aromatic complexities, I can have a golden hued saison. So, <laughs> yeah, I was cool. going to say it would seem like a great summer beer. What would you pair it with? Uh, the, you know, it's like saisons uh, do everything. Like I said, they're they're 
bold and robust, and yet they're crisp and refreshing. Um, they yeah. seem to go with just about anything. It's a bit of, for everything, you know. <laughs> so. And this one's cool too, because you know the old saison tradition used to come from uh, farm brewing, uh, and saison meant many different things to many different brewers. But they would incorporate lots of different grains, typically lots of different herbs and spices, just based on what they could get their hands on. So this one has a little malted rye, which gives it a kind of touch of spicy grain character. Some oats for silky smoothness. So a little bit more malt sweetness up front than dry means it goes with just about anything from seafood, seafood stews, roast chicken, picking up on the herbal stuff, uh, ethnic cuisines, you know, you think of like uh, basil, lemongrass, and Thai. Uh, recently I've been on this like Middle Eastern uh, kick and love cumin. Um, and uh, I find that the, the kind of citric, spicy qualities of Cezanne is really great with that. Um, and then kind of more uh, available and obvious, um, it's great with all sorts of meats like charcuterie, but you know, I found this is really great with like just a big, huge Italian sub. Saison uh, uh, is awesome. Mm -hmm. Digs into the richness, gives you some peppery notes to balance against the, the salt of the meat and the acidity of the, the vinegar sauce on top. Quickly before we go, uh, I was driving over here and got an exciting email. I was at a stoplight when I read it <laughs> about Snallygaster. Yes, Snallygaster right, yeah. is returning in September. Third year. It's yeah. Very exciting. Tell us uh, just a bit about it. Sure. And uh, we'll put the website up. Oh, down awesome! Here. Thank you. Yeah. So Snallygaster is our uh, our our beer festival. We do one major beer festival in D.C. This will be the third year we've done it. We're really excited this year. We're returning to the Navy Yard area near Blue Jacket. Not in the same place as it was the first year, but uh, right nearby is so kind of be between Blue Jacket and National Stadium. Very metro accessible, beautiful views. Uh, we're gonna push for, I'm gonna push for about 250 beers outside. And as you know, um, I really, I, I work my tail off trying to find crazy stuff from all over the world for this one. So really exciting, awesome food, uh, great live music and um, yeah, can't wait. Like I said, though, it's actually September 13th this year. Okay. In the past, it's been uh, early to middle October. Moved it up. Guarantees even nicer weather uh, uh, for beer drinking, so should be great. Check out details online. I had a blast last year, and I remember all of it. Maybe that maybe that's astonishing. Be it. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. It really is. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.